الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد Continuing on in our study of Aqidah uh, Tawasatiyah by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah Rahimahullah Ta'ala We reached a portion in our treaties where Shaykh al-Islam Rahimahullah in his explanation of the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah of the Creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah Shaykh al-Islam Rahimahullah Ta'ala mentioned after speaking up extensively and bringing nasus from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa taala, affirming them from Kitab la wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then speaking in his treaties or discussing in his treaties about the creed of Firqat al Najia. Who is the Firqat al Najia? Who is Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah? Ahl Sunnah are those who affirm what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms about, about himself and what negate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates about himself and they affirm what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam affirmed about him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they negate what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam negated about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Shaykh al-Islam began to mention about from the creed of Ahl sunnah is to have Iman in what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said about what will take place after death. And this is something for us to reflect upon as Muslims, to reflect upon our lives, reflect upon what we've contributed in this life. Are we like those who Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala uh, praises in the Quran and speaks about in the Quran, the people of Iman, the people who serve the religion of Allah, Subhanahu wa ta'ala with their ilm and their lives and sacrificing uh, sacrificing their wealth, their property, and even themselves? Or are we of those people who just took it easy in this dunya, who use this dunya as mere play? dunya, Those who just took pleasure in this dunya, in this life, instead of reflecting on the hereafter, did we make sacrifice? So death should always uh, uh, give us these things to ponder and reflect upon. Death should be a reminder for us when we witness the death of others or we bury others as no one escapes from death. Every soul shall taste death. And how did we spend our life? Did we contribute to humanity? Did we contribute to the spread of good? Or did we contribute to the spread of evil? Did we leave an evil path behind us? وَعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ And may Allah bless us to be of those who leave behind good. So, Shaykh al-Islam said, وَمِنَ الْإِيمَانِ بِيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ الْإِيمَانُ بِكُلِّ مَا أَخْبَرَ بِهِ نَبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مِمَّا يَكُونَ بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ فَيُؤْمِنُونَ بفتنة القبر وبعذاب القبر ونعيمه ونعيمه فأما الفتنة فإن الناس يفتنوا أو يمتحنوا يمتحنون يفتنون أو يمتحنون في قبورهم فيقال للرجل من ربك وما دينك ومن نبيك فَيُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ ثَابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ فَيَقُولُ الْمُؤْمِنْ رَبِّيَ اللَّهُ وَإِسْلَامُ دِينِي وَمُحَمَّدٍ صلى الله عليه وسلم نَبِيِّي وَأَمَّا الْمُرْتَابِ فَيَقُولُ هاهو هاهو لا أدري سمعت الناس يقولون شيئا فقلته فيضرب بمرزبة من حديد فيصيح سيحة يسمعها كل شيء 
إلا الإنسان ولو سمع حال إنسان لسعق ثم بعد هذه الفتنة إما نعيم وإما العذاب إلى أن تقوم القيامة الكبرى فتعاد الأرواح إلى الأجساد Shaykh al-Islam rahimahullah ta'ala said as regards the matter to the matter of having faith in the hereafter it also implies those things which have been stated by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and which will be disclosed after death so this is the amur al-ghaybiyya this is the hereafter this is what's in store for us all in this sense the trial in the grave meaning the fitna of the qabr the trial of the grave. Ahl Sunnah affirms this. And this is the point that Shaykh al Islam is mentioning this. He's mentioning in the Unwan, he said, to have faith in that which has been stated by the Prophet وسلم, and will take place after death. So, this is a part of the creed of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is that they believe in the uh, punishment of the grave, which differs to those sects and those other faiths which don't believe in this. There are actually those groups from, for example, the, uh, that, that disbelieve in the Adhab al-Qabr. They say, no, there's no Adhab al-Qabr. It doesn't fit with our intellect. وَعِيَذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ To deny the, the Adhab al-Qabr, to deny the Nusus, is kufr, takes you out of the fold of Islam. But if they deny it for some ta'wil or something, then their affair is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, the ulama, uh, speak extensively about this. Is the person who does this, do they have udr bi jahil? Allahu alam. And it's reached us that there's a group, uh, especially in the UK and around the world, Hizb uh, tahrir that they don't believe in the adab al qabr. So, are they disbelievers? Are they kuffar? Allah knows best. Maybe they have the excuse of ignorance or ta'wil, that they don't believe that the texts that refer to adab al qabr being sahih. In that case, this is ta'wil and this, this is a, something they're excused for, being ignorant deviants instead of disbelieving uh, uh, ignorant deviants. So there's, there's the difference in that, and that's what we have to know, that Ahlul Sunnah affirms the adab al qabr So, Shaykh al-Islam said, In this sense, the trial in the grave, the affliction in the grave, and the favors of Allah are to be believed in. Ahlul Sunnah believes in that. They believe that some people will be tested and tried in their that some people will fail the test as disbelievers and as wicked munafik and wicked sinners that they won't be able to answer those questions about who their Lord is and what their religion is and who their prophet was they won't be able to answer those questions and they will be punished and tormented in the grave if they lived a wicked sinful life and then others, another group of, of, of mankind, will receive uh, comfort in the grave. The grave will be a place of resting, as they say, a resting place until the day of judgment. And may Allah bless us to be of those who rest in our grave and who are comforted in our graves. Amin. So Shaykh al-Islam says, In this sense, the trial in the grave, the affliction in the grave, and the favors of Allah are to be believed in. Al-fitnatu means that people are put to trial in their graves. Everyone will be tested. The person is asked, Who is your Lord? Which is your religion? Who is your prophet? To those who have faith in Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants that they'll be firm and stable in their answer in this life as well as the hereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this in the Quran. Thus the believer says, My Lord is Allah. And Islam is my religion. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is my prophet. But the one who has doubt, the hypocrites, the ones who are shaky, the ones who are in disbelief and kufr, they will say, whoa, whoa, or alas, I do not know. He can't answer that. He'll be tripping over his own tongue. I said what I heard the people say because they had doubt. The people said in my village, so I said it. The people in my tribe said it, so I said it. The people in my general area where I was raised up, they said it, so I said it because they didn't have ilm. And they didn't have iman. They didn't believe in that. And that's why we can't have taqlid. We can't blindly follow in matters of creed and creed. You have to have ilm. 
You have to know the basics of Islam, who Allah is, who the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, and who and what Islam is. You have to know some basic things about Islam and Tawheed and Creed and Faith. And this is what books like this have, uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has favored those great scholars to write and deliver uh, and present to us the Creed of Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. We have to know that. There are basic things about the religion of Islam we have to know. We can't be someone who's just a TV Muslim, a weekend Muslim, a Muslim who is just uh, busy with this life and they pray sometimes. They pray only Jumu'ah. They fast only Ramadan or they don't, they only pray during Ramadan. The rest of the year they don't, they don't even pray. They don't even do any effort to do anything for their soul. There's no food for the soul. Instead, they remain ignorant. And the ulama explain that this is a type of disbelief. The person, the person who refuses to learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, his religion, and refuses to remember Allah by not praying, by staying away from religious knowledge in, in, in its entirety, not ever picking up a book to learn how to properly pray, to learn how to properly make wudu, to learn how to properly fast, to learn who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, then this person has left the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the bab to zandaka, the bab of apostasy, the bab of, heres uh, of, of heresy. That's what we have to have knowledge. The Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever, whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them knowledge and understanding of the religion. Why? Because that knowledge and understanding is fiqh fi deen. It's learning, it's teaching you how to practice your religion. On basira, on ilm, on knowledge. Not based on taqlid, on this one saying, and I heard this one saying, this one is a Sufi master, he told me this. This one is a marid, he told me this. This one is uh, with this jama'at or this group, and he told me so. But you didn't learn what the Qur'an said. And you didn't learn what the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Uh, and you didn't learn what the Salaf of this Ummah said about this religion of Islam and how to practice it. وَعِيَادٌ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ So the person who has weakness in their heart, weakness in their Iman, meaning they, they're not even firm in their Iman, they don't even know what they believe, then this person in the Qabr, they will be tested and they won't even know what to say. So as, uh, as uh, Shaykh al-Islam, he said, but the one who doubts says, alas, alas, I do not know. I said what I heard other people say. Then this person will be struck by hammers of iron. And at this he shrieks so loudly that every creature except man hears him. So all the creatures in creation will hear. They hear when people are being tormented in the grave except man. If man would hear such a, a cry and shrieking, he would become unconscious. That means we would faint if we were to hear how people are being punished and how they, and the screams and the shrieks and how they cry and wail, that, that we would become unconscious from that out of fear, out of fear, having true fear because we'd be witnessing what's going on in the grave. But instead, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given us that ability to see and hear what's going on in the grave. But rather, we should be conscious of it and we believe in it because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa told us about it. Then Shaykh al-Islam said, after this trial, there is, neither, there is either favor or doom, meaning that the person in the grave will either experience comfort or they'll be experienced torment. Can you imagine being beating, beaten with iron hammers? There are people in this dunya who are beaten and tortured. Look at our brothers and sisters in Syria, how they're being tormented by evil shayateen, devils in the skins of human beings. And how many people have died and been tortured, burned alive, had their skin peeled off, all kind of wicked torments. And all of that is only a portion of what will happen in the grave and a portion of what will happen in the hereafter. May Allah protect us from the torment of the grave and the fitna to Dijjal. And Shaykh al-Islam, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, after this trial there's either favor or doom, or there is either comfort or doom. 
until the time of the day of resurrection is established and the souls are returned to the bodies. So Ahl Sunnah believes in that. Ahl Sunnah believes in the torment of the grave and believes in everything that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with. Ahl Sunnah seeks refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the torment of the grave. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the last part of his salat after tishahid and after he, he would say, A'udhu billah min Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min fitnata min fitnata al-qabr min adhaab al-qabr wa fitnata mahya wa mamat wa min fitnata dijjal The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to order us to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from those four things from the punishment from the the torment of the hellfire from the fitna of the grave and from the coming of the antichrist and from uh, the dajjal the and from uh, the magog wa majaj and so it's imperative that the believer that they seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from these things. And it's imperative that we believe that, that this is the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this is a weak, a weak narration, it's in Tirmidhi. But it gives us the general meaning. We can extract from this hadith, although it's weak, it's meaning. Because there's many, as we know, as we mentioned, the dua that the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi told us to seek refuge in Allah from the grave, from the torment of the grave. In this hadith, it was narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Qabru imma rawdatun min riyad al jannah o hufratun min hufrat al-nar. So it was narrated on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but as we said, it's in Tirmidhi, but it's a da'if hadith, that the grave is either one of the lawns, gardens of paradise, or one of the ditches of hell. وَعِيَادَ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ And may Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala protect us from the hellfire and the punishment of the grave and the fitna of the Dajjal, the Antichrist. And may Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala bless us with firmness in this life as well as the hereafter. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنًا وَكِنَا ذَابَ النَّارِ We أسأل الله للأخلاص وثبات على الصنة وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم